And let's give the Lord Jesus a wonderful round of applause. My dear friends, you were doing great, right? In the name of Jesus, you who are here in church, you who are watching us in our IT all over the country and in other television channels, today is going to be a day of a lot of blessings in the name of Jesus. And you can be sure of it. God really has something very big to do in your wonderful life. We have been in campaigns overseas and God has blessed us as usual and within our country as well. And you, who needs the grace of God? There's really no secret, there's no mystery. The key is paying attention to what God is going to enliven in His Word and He is going to enliven a lot. And then you must believe in it. Believe in what He says and take hold of it. Because when we pray, if you are in the faith, God will certainly bless you in the name of the Lord Jesus. And speaking of which, to already warm up our faith, let's see a person who was truly blessed in one of my services, shall we? Natalia, what has God done? Around two years ago, I woke up and my eye was completely blurry. Then I went to the doctor, a retinologist. He said, look, we're going to do some tests, you know. And they came back saying, because of my diabetes, uh, they showed that the optical nerve was completely atrophied. I believe, I believe, I believed now, you know. And now over there, they're not blurred anymore. Now during the prayer, <laughs> during is the it clear prayer, now? Now it's clear. That's great. Let's Amen. apply Jesus. That's beautiful. If I cover this eye, I can see the camera normally now. Before I couldn't, I couldn't see it. I saw it all black in the middle and just saw the edge, you know. But then Dr. Suarez prayed. I trusted in it. I believed in the word. And now, thank God, my eye is clear. <laughs> Well, what is it really good in all of this? The word of our God, which never fails. It's that word that Jesus gave us, and he told us, if you believe, you will see the glory of God. Well, Dr. Suarez, but how does it happen? I don't know it either, but I know it does, and it does a lot. There have been some services when we have said that the prayer, almost everyone has been healed. And speaking of blessing, we still have another person who was blessed. Roll this testimony, shall you, in the name of the Lord. Eduardo, what was your problem? At the beginning of the week, I lifted a heavy weight, unnecessarily, and I started feeling pain and numbness from the waist down, and I've had trouble sitting down and walking, and even my wife was And was feeling... it still numb? Yes, it was. How were you walking, Eduardo? I was dragging my feet. Two workers came here to help me. They were helping me walk to the church, and I couldn't even walk properly. I had trouble walking. Now walk you know? normally, Eduardo. <laughs> Look at that, folks. Doesn't Jesus deserve a round of applause, folks? The blessing is truly for everyone, and we don't have to do anything but listening carefully to the preaching of the word. The faith comes, we hold tight to it, we use it, and God blesses us. My friends, in the book of John, chapter 4, verse 32, there is a word in here which I would like to convey to you. It's in the passage when Jesus was sitting there, there over there by Jacob's well. And he then, his disciples approached him and they said the following. Um, it's in verse 33. Meanwhile, his disciples urged him, Rabbi, eat something. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you know nothing about. This food is, is the word of the Lord God. We really do need this food. Obviously, we need the natural food and we should have it at the right amount, not in excess and not with any shortage as well. But we should really have what everything that we need but the Word of God. If you don't ask God, if you don't start praying and every time you pray you say this, Lord, give me the spiritual bread. I'm used to doing that in my meals. Father, I really thank you for this blessed meal because he promised to bless my bread and my water. So when I want to drink water, I remember that there is this promise in there that is a blessing for me. And I also thank God for all of the food, but I always say and give to my heart all of the true bread. It is in his name that I pray. Jesus said the following, I have food to eat. He had some food to eat and he ate all of this food. 
we should have uh, uh, the, the same appetite, appetite. Because if we eat all of it, we will have the necessary spiritual force to do what he always orders us to do. And he might give us a mission that is apparently very difficult. No, this food gives me strength, gives me some guidance. It gives me all of the power. There is some difficult situation. If I had been feeding myself from the bread of life, like next Sunday, we are having the Lord's Supper. And then he says, unless you eat of my flesh and drink of my blood, you have no part with me. You will have no life within you. So if I eat from the food that God gives me, I will have this blessing. If he had some food to eat, I should have it as well, which is fulfilling the will of God. Let us pray now. Father, thank you for this so special word, which has enlightened all of our hearts. This bread that we truly need daily in every moment that we need it and especially when we are in touch with your entire word. Listening to the preaching, reading the Bible, meditating on what is written, and then we will be victorious. Give every one of us this bread, Father, in the name of Jesus, and I will bless this person now. As a minister of the word of God, I paralyze all of the action of the enemy in your life. I order, take everything that is yours and get out in the name of Jesus, and you say with me, Amen. Today we will continue a beautiful study which I have started in the last service. Here in Isaiah 64, the prophet starts by saying, saying an invocation, and he says the following, Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down. He is talking to Jesus, the word of God before his, his incarnation that the mountains might shake at your presence. Why was it necessary for Jesus to rend the heavens, to open up the heavens and to come down? It was necessary because the heavens were always closed to man. The sin of Adam caused us to be separated from our God. Man, when he obeyed the devil, became the servant of the devil, the sinner, and he could no more have fellowship with the Lord God, which is holy, which is sanctity, which is a consuming fire, and it could be completely fulminated. So God had to expel the couple from all of his presence, and therefore the heavens were shut to humankind. But Isaiah realized 700 years before Jesus was born that the heavens would one day be open, and he cried, Oh, that you would render open the heavens and come down. This has happened when... Jesus came and the Holy Spirit planted the seed of the life in the womb of the Virgin Mary. And he, the word of God, was born just like any of us. He grew up and he paid the price for our redemption. And today this work is already done. There's nothing else, nothing else to be done. And we have the right to really believe. And when we believe, we will see the fulfillment of the, of the continuity of his verse that the mountains might shake, break apart at your presence. Today, it doesn't matter the size of the mountain that you're facing. When you set your mind to it and start to pray, the anointment of God will come down and that thing will shake, it will break apart. And many times the person will even get impressed that all of a sudden the lump is gone, the evil is gone. And why? Why has it happened? Because the Lord has operated on it. Now, for him to come here, there has been many events that followed the plan of God. When man sinned, God created the redemption plan. There was none righteous, no, not one, who could pay the price for the entire fall. So the choice fell over God himself, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Jesus was the Word, and he came so that he could substitute for us. He became as, as, one, as one of us, as we really are. There is no difference between us whatsoever. Jesus was exactly a man like we are, and at the same time, he was God. But he didn't act as God because he stripped himself of his glory. And the Bible says in the letter to Ephesians, 
that he despoiled himself of his authority than coming the likeness of men. But he didn't have any sin. Why did he have to do this? Because someone pure with no sin would have to pray for, for, for the sin of men. But there was none. No, not one. And then the choice fell on him and he came. But now for him to come, my brother, many things have happened. Imagine if Noah wasn't a righteous man, a trumpeter of the truth, who for 120 years announced to the humankind of his time, man was on a tremendous moral corruption as never, never seen before, and people would ridicule Noah. He would say that, that, that a rain so strong would come that would flood the whole earth and that everybody would die. And he then started to build his beautiful ark and people would laugh at him. But Noah stayed strong, 120 years preaching. He was a preacher who never had any success because he hasn't one soul. But then the day came when God said, it is now. The, the, the ark was ready. And how would he look around in a bush to take a pair of tigers, a pair of lions, a pair of elephants, a pair of every animal? God himself made the animals come to him. And people didn't see that as a miracle. Noah, with the door open, standing by the door, and there came the lion and the lioness, and then came in the goat and the nanny goat, and no animal would fight with the other animals. The lion wouldn't lick his, lick his lips, great, dinner is here, nothing like that. <laughs> God took away the appetite of the beast. They were all there, and each one of them found its own spot, and they stayed all that time in the beautiful ark. It rained, it rained, it rained, and then yes, it began to flood. They started to ask to get in, but that wasn't possible anymore. The ark floated and went about floating. They say it stopped over the Mount Ararat in Turkey, but I don't know about this part in there. Yeah, the Bible says that. I don't know if it's there or exactly how it is and what happened, but then the plan of God was fulfilled. Everybody died. But what if Noah hadn't been faithful? If Abraham had never really left, his people, because everybody was an idolater using all sorts of witchcraft and sought the living God until he heard the voice of God, get out of your country from your family and go to a land that I will show you. The coming of our Savior would not have happened because it would have to come by order of God and come from Abraham the seed. And Abraham's wife was barren, but he had to pray and pray. But how could it be if God's plan and my wife doesn't have a child? When she already was nearing the age of 80 and she had no baby, she said, Abraham, take my slave here, my servant here, Hagar, and have an affair with her and her child will be mine. And Abraham obeyed her and God said, that's not right. This is not my plan. The, the, the seed has to come from you and her. But how? At the age of 90, she was a mother and Abraham was 100 years old when he was a father. And then Isaac was born. Isaac got married when he was 40, and his wife was also barren. But what a trial. Well, if they're servants of God, why doesn't God heal them? Don't be stubborn. Don't be fastidious with God. Why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? God, show me your will. Because sometimes things might happen that if they didn't, we wouldn't ever do his will. Isaac, when he found out Rebekah was barren, he pleaded with the Lord for his wife. 20 years later, she conceived and two babies were born. More trial. And by the time of the deliverance, the first one was all hairy and he was red haired. And it was incredible. There were two boys in her womb. The second one was born with his hand on the other one's heel, holding it. But why was that? In the womb, they were already fighting. Rebecca asked God, Lord, why is it so? And God said, two nations are in your womb. And the older, who will receive the blessing, who would receive it, who is the firstborn, the firstling, the heir, he will serve the younger. Inside the womb, Jacob was born holding his house heel. I will supplant you. It all came about so that Jesus could come to the earth. My brother, there are so many things that God allows for to happen to us. I remember when I was 13, I was telling it on this trip to a pastor. I said to my grandfather, I said, Grandpa, Give me some land to plant some corn because I need to prepare my future. I was 13 and my grandpa took some land and he said, you use the hoe, you know, you have to use the hoe. Seeing as you are not very strong yet, this will be enough for you. I worked there for over a week, cleaning the earth, working the hoe. Since I was little, I was used to doing it. I planted the corn and I, I, I grandpa, how much is it going to come to? Well, if the weather is good, it's this much. Then I can sell it next year, I'll be stronger. 
I'll ask for more land. When I'm 15, I'll almost be a man. I'll ask for even more. And then I'll be saving all of this money. When I'm 18, I'll be able to afford my own land. That was my plan. <laughs> but my brother, we had such a drought, a dreadful drought. And I was a servant of Jesus. I prayed, God bless me. I remember Elijah in the Bible. I remembered that he prayed and the sky was totally clear. But a cloud as small as a man's hand appeared. And one day appeared on the west side and there was rain coming to my town. That's where it comes from, the good rain. And I said, look, today it's going to rain. And the rain clouds came, my brother. The sky was overcast. It was all dark. It was so dark. There were so many lightnings that I was praising God. But soon after that, it was all gone and it never rained a single droplet. And I prayed <laughs> and I asked God. I cried out to him. Well, it rained nearly nothing. The corn stalks were this short. My father asked, are you going to harvest it? And I said, give them to the pigs. God doesn't want me in the farm. If I had stayed on the farm, if he had done the rain miracle, perhaps I would never be preaching the gospel. You see how serious this is? And that was how things were growing and growing in my life and here as well. So Jacob and 12 children of his, one of them was Judah, and it was from the Judah lineage that he had come. The firstborn, the Bible says he was of the evil one. He didn't want to be descendants. He didn't want them. The devil convinced them because he knew that Jesus would come from their seed and he avoided it any way he could. His second son, way back then, when a brother died, the other one married the deceased wife to have descendants. She married him and she did the same thing. At the moment of intimacy, he threw his seed on the ground. God killed this other one as well. And then Judah said, my daughter-in-law, Wait, because there is a little one, but he'll grow up and he will be, be your husband. And when the young boy grew up, Judah forgot about it. The girl, she had to pretend to be a prostitute. Judah was a widower to have an affair with him. You can read the Bible. This is serious. And she then said, what will you give me? I will send you a young goat, but will, will you give me a pledge for it? I'll give you my staff and whatnot. And she kept them. And later to prove it, who is the prostitute who is with him? If I'm not a prostitute, the staff is here. Look, my daughter-in-law, see where Jesus came from? But Jesus had to be born this way. There were so many things that they went through, which he have to go through. When I see this in the Bible, I have to think, my God, you, to fulfill your plan, you depended on man who is flawed, man who is selfish, man who consecrated men, you guarded them and you've made it. And I think to myself, I have to be the kind of person who doesn't get in the way of the plans of God for the lives of millions of people. Today our show is aired to around a hundred different nations. We are um, uh, in places you can't even imagine, winning people over to Jesus, where it is forbidden to preach the word of God. But one day, one day, this will all be over because the heavens were already sent. They were open. And today we have the right to go in there to ask and we are following the plan of God. Find out what is the plan of God in your life. Listen to what God has been speaking to your heart and then do it. Don't leave it aside. Otherwise, you can be considered like the two sons of Judah who were Ur and Onan, who were very evil, and God killed them. Or you may be just considered as many others who have already left the plan of God, and if God hadn't been so careful, Jesus wouldn't have been born, and we would have been totally lost. Well, Dr. Swartis, why should I care about someone who's in some afar nation? Don't do this. It could have been us over there, and someone would be doing the work of our God. God has this plan and he will give it to us. So coming back to Isaiah here, Isaiah shouted, Oh, that you would rend the heavens. And he rented it. When John the Baptist baptized him, he came out of the water. The heavens were opened. The Holy Spirit descended as a dove upon him. And the heavens never were closed again. And the Holy Spirit never went back to heavens. When Jesus, when he died, and he was buried, he said, wait for the fulfillment of the promise of the Father, which he will send in my name. By the time people were prepared, God baptized everyone with the Holy Spirit, and he is still baptizing. The heavens today are opened. Amongst humankind, many people have already stood out in all areas of human knowledge, of human understanding, but there was only one who really stood out. It was Jesus, because the heavens were open to us. Today, anybody, anywhere who prays, Father, in the name of Jesus, I come before you. They are in the presence of God at that very moment. 
And when they start to serve God, to seek him out, they receive such a very great power, so powerful that they will be able to win over all of the battles. My brother, today God is talking to all of us, with me and with you. He is showing us what we can be without what many others have, have already been. In the previous service, I preached verse 2, which says this, As when fire sets twigs ablaze and causes water to boil. It's necessary now, with the heavens open, that we ask God to show us the firewood, the twigs that we should cut, the promise that he will give to all of us. And we should take this promise and put it in the fire of the Holy Spirit. God, I now want all of your action. This promise in the fire, the fire won't, it, it won't, it, it catches fires, but it doesn't burn it. It's a different fire like the one Moses saw. This will cause the water to boil the revelations of the word of God. And then you, one of these days, filled with the Holy Spirit, you will be able to determine whatever you want. And God will do the work in your life. He says the following, come down to make your name known to your enemies. God wants to use me, he wants to use you, to make sure his name is known through every one of us who wouldn't be nothing because of Adam's sin, but now we're important people in the plan, in the plan of God. As was Noah, as was Abraham, as was Isaac, as was Jacob, as was Judah. As all of the people who preceded the, the, uh, the, the coming of the Lord Jesus, people from whom Jesus descends by the flesh, we will also leave our marks um, uh, all of our footprints on the work of God because of all the realizations we have been achieving, God wants to use all of us. The heavens are open. We should really now ask from him that, that he uses us with his firewood, which is burning in the fire, warming and causing the waters to boil, the revelations of the word. We will be used by the Lord God. We will release all of the power and the name of the Lord will be made known to our enemies and they will tremble because through us he will do this and cause the nations to quake before you. God in us will make all of the power from hell to fear, to tremble, and they will become desperate because every place that the sole of our foot tread upon, God has given to us our great victory in the name of the Lord Jesus. Shall we watch the real life drama? come from from a life totally completely out of the will of God I was a very quiet person I used drugs to talk to be happy to get extroverted you know to try and be socially happy she's a woman that's been hurt she's very upset about everything in life I started doing it only at parties but then I became addicted to it actually I had lots of friends but life was empty you know still with her life ruined Regina meets Fabricio we started going out together, he soon moved in with me and not before long, we started to fight. We would use drugs together and after that we would certainly fight. We were together but not actually together, there was no bond of love. And our financial life was a failure. My life was nightclubs, alcohol, drugs and I worked long hours but then my entire salary would go down the drain. Our money wasn't enough, we would get into debts and we would borrow money. Fabricio's mother takes the couple to visit the Grace of God Church. We were already searching for what was missing in our lives at that time. When you know? I entered that place and I started to hear the preaching, it was instantaneous to both of us, you know? That fire was lit and that was it. After that day, we came to San Jose and we started to congregate in the main church. From the first service I watched, I have never left the Grace of God Church. It was one service better than the other. After the Monday service, we were ready for the Wednesday service. After the Wednesday service, we were ready for Friday, and Friday we were ready for Sunday. Jesus has cleansed me, he lifted me up, he restored me, he made me new. He filled me up, he healed me. He healed me emotionally. Right after that, we decided we wanted to be baptized, but we needed to get married first, so we quickly set a date. And we got married, a civil marriage. We were baptized in July 2013. 
They feel the calling of sponsoring the work of God and the blessings start to come. And we saw the Faith Show program and the greatness of this project of Dr. Suarez, you know, because today we edify here. And then prosperity started to come to us very quickly. And 40 days, I think, after we got married, we bought a brand new car and we already paid off our other car. And later on, we got another car. We already acquired a piece of land for us to build a, a store. We are businessmen now. We have an establishment that sells electrical supplies. We only install in high class installments. Our lives have changed totally. They have changed financially. My husband declined some work offers because he's overloaded with work. On the first month when we opened the store, we closed a big sale, a very good sale, something we didn't expect. And God has been blessing us day after day. And if we look back, three years ago, our lives were completely trashed. My mother gave me life 45 years ago, and God today has restored my life. God has made me stand up. God has given me happiness. He gave me an incredible wife. I've bonded with my children. I've bonded with my parents. He has made everything brand new. Everything that the enemy tried to take away. Today we have a blessed marriage. We are very close. Ever since Christ came into our hearts, our life has been so much better. God has redeemed us. He has created dreams and goals. He has made me new. He has taken me from the deep and He made me rise. It's love that we cannot put into words. I'm deeply grateful to God because He has chosen me. How beautiful, folks. Oh, glory to God. <laughs> now, let's pray. I was in a hurry because I wanted to pray some more with you. Shall we rise now? You who are at home now. Dr. Swides, I've been going through some very tough times, so let's talk to the one who can change any of your tough times into wonderful times. Bow your heads down. Father, we are now coming here before your presence. And we have seen today that Jesus has opened up for us, as Isaiah said, that he would rend the heavens, and he did it. It is open, Father. It cannot be closed anymore. And he said, I am the gate. And nobody will close this door. It is simply impossible. And I ask you, Father, come with your angels, with your host, to heal, to deliver, to make wonders happen, to transform these lives, to execute a perfect work. Because, Father, my faith is bound to this person's faith. And I now determine and I say to you, spirit of illness, of confusion, of turmoil, of all of the unemployment, of bankruptcy, of drugs, of prostitution, of any type of evil work, demons, get out of these people, go away. Don't stay there anymore in the name of Jesus Christ.